Wade. I'm from scenic Southeast Denver, and I'm honored to nominate my bearded neighbor, Owen Perkins, for state representative. <laughs> Politicians promise us everything we want to 
here during the election, and after the election, they vote with the moneyed interests. I support Owen Perkins because he has a great heart, and his heart is going to have him vote the way that we all want him to vote during his term in the legislature. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Deborah Turner Kelly. I represent Platt Park, um, and uh, I've known Owen for a couple of years now. Everything that everyone has said in front of me, I can second, third, fourth. The one thing that brought me on to Owen was last May at Blue Bonnet. He mentioned something that had opened my eyes, particularly as a homeowner, which is affordable housing in our district. That is something that is critical to keeping young people and senior citizens in our neighborhood and having an inclusive a neighborhood with a wide diversity so people can live and be near downtown. So for that reason, I vote for Owen Perkins. Thank you. He's got lots to tell you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, officers, delegates, alternates, and friends. Uh, thank you so much for your participation in the democratic process today. It's an uh, honor to address you. I've, I've heard a common theme as I've knocked doors around House District 2. People keep telling me they never find a candidate as progressive as they are. My answer is usually, bring it on. I, I frame my detailed stance on the issues with a quote from Eugene Debs. When there's a lower class, I'm in it. When there's a criminal element, I'm of it. When there's a soul in prison, I am not free. I'll finish this phase of my campaign the way I started it early last year with the question my guest speaker posed while kicking off my campaign. Think in your minds of an issue, the policy issue you care about. Okay, have you got it? You can't have it. You can't have it because our tool for accomplishing public policy is broken. It doesn't work for ordinary people anymore. It works for connected people. It works for contributors. It works for people who can afford to have lobbyists. It works for political insiders, but it doesn't work for us. As you might suspect, that guest speaker was former Senator Ken Gordon, a champion for campaign finance reform, a true servant of the public interest, and a hero to many of us. I'm running for city representative because I want to work for you. I want to make our public policy tool work for us again. I want to carry the very voices of our diverse district to the Capitol and ensure that the people of House District 2, that your interests, the public interests, will always trump the special interests. Monday morning, there'll be 100 legislators under the Golden Dome. Seven of them have had the courage to say no to PAC money, no to special interests. Is one more going to turn the tide at the Capitol? This may not be the watershed election that restores our state legislator to the ideas of democracy that reclaims the House as belonging to the people. But we have a chance for a watershed election for House District 2. From Baker to Capitol Hill, from Overland Park to Washington Park, we have a chance to position ourselves 100% beyond the influence of that army of special interest groups that descends on the Capitol every day. We have the chance to say here, in House District 2, the public interest is always put first. Those are the targeted doors to the best ends. They represent, they, they are not the targeted doors, the best ends. They represent the uh, inclusive approach to reaching all dens. And when I hear, what I hear at those doors is the issues we need folks listening to at the Capitol. Over and over, they're asking for leadership, full progressive leadership. They're tired of the middle of the road. I talked to a Douglas County teacher in Platte Park, a Jefferson County teacher in University Park, a Denver Public Schools teacher in Wash Park, and their parents on every avenue. And they are frustrated beyond the tipping point at the misappropriation of resources, the undue attention to testing and evaluating, the diminishing professionalism and increasing corporate mindset that doesn't belong in the classroom. As a former teacher, myself, and the son of two teachers, I know what's lost when we start teaching to the tests. I know the value of smaller classes. I know the value of investing in early education. I know that across the board, the suffering when teachers are denied the right to collective bargaining. And I see those policy issues that so many of our residents hold so dear in their hearts and minds, the issues that will determine our children's future. But those issues they can't have because our system is broken at best and rigged at worst to favor special interest groups that are driving our education agenda by pouring money into quarter million dollar campaigns for a volunteer school board position. Last year, I initiated a series of education forums, forums engaging and mobilizing hundreds in our district to uh, learn about ballot issues and candidates for a school board election. 
I want to carry those voices of those school board parents, those teachers. I want to carry the voices of the vulnerable children to the Capitol to fight for campaign finance reform in school board races, to set limits and require disclosure, to level the playing field and restore a sense of balance to an agenda that has pitted our schools against our teachers, stripped our neighborhoods of their resources, and left the most vulnerable members of the population the victims. I, uh, another topic, I see environmental issues moving to the forefront of people's minds in House District 2. Last summer I coordinated a pair of climate change symposiums. And we're seeing at the legislature now, at the Capitol, issues that were raised at that forum. We live in Colorado in an arid climate with a looming water crisis starting to take hold as we suffer historic drought, wildfires, and floods. We need visionary leadership that can look beyond the horizon and act with foresight to reduce carbon emissions, support sustainable, renewable energy resources, preserve our public wildlands, and implement the strictest zero tolerance regulations on fracking. We don't need another middle of the road high school to understand the oil and gas industry's plans to further encroach on our communities. We need bold leadership to act on science-based evidence to instill independent oversight to ensure the highest standard of public health and safety and to protect the quality of our air, water, and soil. I hear about health care from people who are slipping through the cracks, from firefighters whose occupation, occupational hazards force them to retire early but are left out in the cold without medical benefits while they wait for them to be eligible for coverage through Medicare. The 400,000 Coloradans who remain uninsured when Obamacare is fully implemented, the 40% of that population representing the undocumented, the more than half of Coloradans experiencing homelessness were still uninsured, the woeful underfunding of mental health programs, these should induce outrage. House District 2 needs a leader with a priority in securing universal health care for Colorado. Somebody who will work in the House with the same diligence and vision that has fueled Senator Aguilar's work in the lesser body. I worked to get the ball rolling with the forum to bring the best minds of our state together last month to uh, outline the path beyond Obamacare and to onto universal health care. And I'm eager to take the next step as a member of the state house. Even our issues have issues. Those experiencing homelessness find themselves in a condition that our city has moved to criminalize, vilifying the poor instead of acting to reduce the causes of poverty, to provide affordable housing for the population outgrowing its resources, and to raise the minimum wage so that hard-working people holding multiple jobs can raise above the poverty level. I recently invited people to my house to start a petition drive that's caught fire, and I now hold in my hand 1,400 signatures of Coloradans demanding a raise in the minimum wage for hourly employees, including 50 employees. We have to grow and move to, to the onward and use the progressive strength that represents to initiate action that can lead Colorado again, and Colorado lead. That's what I've done for a dozen years in our district. Rescue good ideas from the waste bits of rhetoric and galvanize our community to initiate action, to live our progressive values and begin the real work to affect change. Colorado led on gun safety legislation last year, and when vulnerable settlers came under attack and recall efforts to target their stances, I put my campaign on hold and worked to mobilize our community to defend courageous Coloradans who stood up for the public interest with full knowledge that it could cost them their careers. Denver demands that kind of leadership. It should be intolerable to expect anything less from our leaders, given the safety of a democratic stronghold and the freedom from financial pressure we have here. Our citizens have taken up the cause of compassion and care, fighting for the right to make end-of-life decisions. They've approached me with reports of the broken promises our government and our, between our government and the military veterans. They've pointed me to uh, injustices perpetuated on people with disabilities. And I've heard a call to action around senior issues as I've embraced an emphasis on keeping older Coloradans living in their independent homes and communities while helping our, our, our economy. With that responsiveness, I've proved to have the support of the youngest and the oldest delegate in this assembly, 19 and 90 years respectively, and they inspire me to continue to work. You see me lead in our district as a trusted citizen activist, and I'm eager to take the next step and represent you as a citizen legislator. You see me work to grow our party, to turn out our district in record numbers, and engage our neighbors to act on behalf of our values. Help me take that ethic to the next level. The antidote to a broken system is to elect trusted leaders who are committed to values that can fix what's broken. My strong stance against the corrupting influence of big money in politics is unique in this race. 
my rejection of PAC and special interest money it resonates in this district. You've seen me walk in the walk for years, including two years at the Capitol with Senator Aguilar, knocking every neighborhood, every year, every season, not to help her be a good candidate in the safe district, but to help her be a good legislator, engaged with her constituents, making them proud of those who represent them. That's what you can expect from me. That's how we drown out the influence of big money and special interest in politics. My character, my ethics, my value are about giving voice to the voiceless, about being part of a society that cares most about its least powerful and acts first on behalf of its most vulnerable. While there's a lower class, I'm in it. While there's a criminal element, I'm of it. While there's a soul in prison, I'm not free. That's our constituency. That's my commitment. That's what I stand for when I humbly ask you for the honor of your support to bring that ethic into action and vote me into the House. I'm Owen Perkins, I'm a proud progressive Democrat, and I'll always keep working as hard as I ever have to maintain your support and your trust. Thank you very much.